Hi, everyone. I'm posting this reading to show you how I read cards when I'm fishing for specific information. So, for example, if I want to know if someone is in a coma, this is just an example, this is what I would recommend that you do before you start your reading. So if the question that you're asking is if you want to know if somebody is married, you, you would this technique will work. It will work way better than going by guides and what's on the internet and what's in the booklets. Some of you are starting to read cards and you are really, really, really intuitive. But I always hear you saying, oh, but I've got to learn this and I have to learn that. The best way to read cards, I think, is to use this technique. So I'm going to use this example of the question of show me what the cards that I would see if somebody is in a coma. I forgot to add one little thing. So after you figured out what cards you would see, of course, then I would recommend taking a little break and go back and then ask the question. So if you're wondering if you know, if Mike is in a coma, after you do the process that I'm about to show you, you would then stop, take a break, go back, and then you would ask, show me the situation with Mike, okay? Don't ask if Mike is in a coma because you're feeding the answer in. What we're going to ask here is we're going to ask, first of all, think about what a coma is. Well, a coma, as far as I know, um, is when the conscious mind is not is is either lying dormant or on hold. So you're still alive. You're still alive, but it, it, to me, I'm just going to guess that the subconscious um, it would still be active. But, but certainly what we do know is that the conscious is, um, is not active. Some of you are disagreeing with me, and I, I know why, because I, I see what you're saying, because some people do have recollections of hearing what's going on in the conscious realm, but still that you guys are retrieving that through your subconscious. Trust me on this, okay? Um, so what we're going to ask first is show us um, uh, show us cards that that really focus on um, the conscious mind being very very alert. Show us cards. Show us what what would we see in tarot? And by the way, don't be surprised if you have a number of different decks. It, it will be different cards, not always, but, uh, but I would do ask this question with every single deck that you have because some of the decks, that's the beauty of getting different decks, some of the decks have different meanings. So we're using the Tackle de Mouse first. Show me what we would see when the conscious mind is very alert and functioning. Show me what we would see when the conscious mind is very alert and functioning. <laughs> this is interesting. This is really interesting what we just see, what we're seeing here. <laughs> this is how cool spirit is. So what, what we just learned here, what spirit is saying is that well, I'm going to show you now in a minute that when the <laughs> left ear ringing, the <laughs> so when the conscious mind is alert, the subconscious is also, there's something else spirit is telling me. I'm just, I'm being told here to, to demonstrate with, to show you the original cards. What's under here? Very funny. Okay. <laughs> this is really cool what you're about to see. This is such, it's so refreshing. There's always a really cool spin that Spirit puts on everything. So I asked the question, show me uh, the cards that I would see for when the conscious mind is alert and functioning. And... So what Spirit is telling me to point out to you is that, um, so over here, okay, is the conscious mind. So things are out in the open. You know when I always say, oh, something's going to be revealed, it's going to come out in the open for all to see. That is the Six of Wands. Just hang on now. Okay. So when the conscious mind is alert, here's the card of the ego. Out in the open for all to see. But here's the spin that Spirit puts on it. So I asked, Spirit's saying, you asked, 
The question that I asked was, show me the cards that we would see when the conscious mind, and also I'm, the spirit is underlining something here. I said, very alert. So uh, the point that spirit is making here is when the conscious mind is very alert and running the show, here's what we get. Here's what we get. We get someone over here. There's someone looking. What they're looking at oh, is what's in, out in the open for all to see. But what's really funny here is we're going to get a little caveat here. Over here is the subconscious mind. Okay, this, this is a healthy subconscious mind here. Okay, so there's the healthy subconscious. But, but what I, if I had said, show me what the cards that we would see if we have a healthy balance uh, on the conscious and the subconscious, th we wouldn't be seeing this here. I don't know what we would be seeing, but here's what we see when the focus is over, is overly on, on what you see in the 3D. Confusion. Not being distracted by glitter. When you are focusing more, when you are very focused on the conscious, on the 3D, on what you see, and you're shutting down your subconscious, it creates confusion and you get distracted by glitter. There's some comment up here, which I'm going to, um, I'm going to comment on in a minute. Something about perfected work. But see, over here is the, is a beautiful subconscious mind that, that, that you should be you know, it's, it's, it's not being focused on enough because you're being very focused on the, so anyway, here's the conscious, there's the subconscious, I feel. Um, but actually, no, spirit is saying, no, this is the overly, this is when you're overly focused on, on the 3D, um, when you're heavily, um, when you're heavily focused, too focused, not drawing enough on inner vision, not meditating enough, not relying here not being grateful to this something else that's weird to say. But anyway, the point is, is that this is, this, it creates confusion. Okay, so I'm going to rephrase the question first. I'm going to deal with the four of wands though there. One sec. Guys, I'm getting such a weird download here. I've never, ever, ever, ever picked this up before. So Spirit is saying, there's the four of wands. They're not on the surface. Spirit is saying they're not for once. They're almost there. They are not on the surface. Have a look at these people here. Do you see how the four wands are in the foreground and they are not standing on it? It has something to do with being overly focused on uh, what people think. Because this can be a card of um, embellishment um, uh, ego needing all this, you know, attention. And it, and it creates confusion here. And what we're, what we're seeing here, we're learning about why, what happens when, when there's an over-focus on conscious, on, when this, when the conscious mind is running the show, like mostly, the subconscious here has been shut down, but the, but the but the key thing it, are these two cards here. This is the impact of it. They're not on the surface. I'm hearing. I'm just going to see if I can look that up and see if that is. Um, see this this is the why I'm telling you. Do not do not look any. This will not be found in any book. Nothing. I am going to check the pictorial, the 1909 pictorial guide. That's the only thing I would recommend that you look at. It was written in 1909 um, by Arthur Edward Waite. Now, he deliberately spoke in this really, really, um, uh, I mean, his vocabulary was uh, uh, overwhelmingly uh, broad. So it's really hard to understand what he says because you keep having to look stuff up in a dictionary. But I am going to quickly check it. So just stand by one moment. I could just be seeing things or hearing things. All right, so I'm going to take a stab at this. And here's where I love your comments. I'm going to ask for your help here because you guys are 
really good when you do. I don't think you comment enough because when you do, it's just really awesome. Sometimes I take your comments, by the way, and I put them in the description box. So, um, here's what I would like your opinion on. The only thing that I can think of is that, um, so the fours, um, because notice how we've got two fours here, and I feel like that's what Spirit, Spirit's trying to point something out here. Okay? Um, it, this has, it, there is something. I am hearing there is something. They are not, they are not on. They are not on the surface. So there's something, and it's about, it's something related to, um, Sephira at number four, I think. Okay? Which is, um, what is it again? Chesed. Okay, it's about giving, 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 but it's giving when you haven't earned it. Like it's, it's generosity, right? Well, actually, it's more related to mercy. So, you know, it's receiving with, without needing any merit. So gives without regard to merit or deservingness. So it would be like you being very devoted to a, you know, it's like Beauty and the Beast, right? The Beast didn't deserve her, um, she gave, 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 gave. Now, however, she did take off and then he learned his lesson. But anyway, that's not, that's not the point here. Um, I think there is, um, and I do also remember a quote by, here's the only person that I would recommend that if you're going to look something up, look, uh, uh, use YouTube um, to listen to um, Helen Goldberg. She's a Jewish lady. She's a little bit verbose, but um, if you go through all of her um, lectures on the on the Sephira, um, because this is the only way that I'm figuring this out, because I do remember her saying, the thing about the Four of Wands, upright, there, there is a, a message here is that you, it's supposed to be perfected work, but you cannot complete your work without love. So what it could be is that the person who's overly focused on the material and, cause here the person on the horse is just take, 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 taking, you know, all this, all this, um, these people just really worship the person there and admire why I don't think they've earned it. It could just be because that person is famous or they have a good name. This can be someone distracted by glitter. So I think the point is there's two things here. You do need, there's, you learn how to be grateful here in the four of swords also contemplative and, and expanding your mind. Gratitude over here. And a focus on on expanding your own mind. Here, you're just assuming um, that you're that you're you're propped up here because of everyone worships you. So you know, it, I, I'm going to invite your comments on that. There is a, a warning here, and it's only because I said, <laughs> "Show me an overly, a very alert, a conscious." Okay, so let's just switch the question now and ask to see the subconscious, okay? And then we're going to find out what the heck a coma looks like. Okay. All right. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story at the end now of this. Okay, so now what we want to see... Sorry, guys. What we want to see now is show us the tarot cards that we would see uh, for the subconscious mind. Um, for the subconscious. Show us the subconscious mind, please. Show us the subconscious mind being active. Show us the subconscious mind. Again, this is Spirit pulling another... What we're getting here is somebody, the Queen of Cups makes all her decisions with unconditional love and knowing what she wants. Over, you know, over here is being very aware, very hugely revealing or revealing emotions. Uh, it, what it means is that this, this is incredible. 
This is clarity, something being very, very clear, and it's warm and sunny. It feels good. And, and there's total clarity here. The lights are on. This is what someone truly wants. This is what they want to invest their cup in. This is what their heart tells them to do. So how interesting. I was expecting to see something like the high priestess, or this is how spirit really, really, you know, this is fresh ideas here. Clarity. Clarity is revealed by the heart. When the subconscious mind is up and running and, and healthy, you know what you want. You are, and, and also, you're not afraid to, isn't that interesting? You are very clear about your emotions. Also, that when you, the subconscious makes everything clear. Now, I've got to tell you something interesting. You do hear me go on sometimes. You know, everybody says that the, uh, the uh, high priestess never speaks. Well, there's one little caveat to that. Occasionally, occasionally, she'll speak to one person. You know who it is? The Queen of Cups. Now, I cannot find, nor do I remember learning why, but I have a little theory on it. Here's, here's what I do know about the Queen of Cups. It, it, um, the thing that, that makes her completely different from every other queen. I'm just going to down, I'm getting a huge download right now, okay? Which is really interesting. Um, all queens elementally are water. So the Queen of Cups is water on water. She is the most telepathic queen. In the original card, not in the Marseille card, but in the original card in the Rider Waite deck, there are two angels on either sides of the cups. People think that they're mermaids, they're not, they're angels. Have a look at this here in the Marseille deck. The sun in the Marseille deck, there are two, look at this, two angels. 100% subconscious, the Queen of Cups is. Isn't that something? She makes every decision, every decision with her heart. That, that marks her from the, that, that she is completely, actually, the Queen of Wands doesn't do that. The Queen of Swords definitely doesn't do that. And the Queen of Pentacles does not do that. The Queen of Cups is 100% subconscious, water on water cancer. She is the best telepathic queen. So this, so this is a, remember that I said, um, show us when the subconscious mind is functioning well. Now, now, I know now how we're going to find out. The question is not show us what we'd see for a coma. Now we have to ask the other extreme. Show us when the subconscious, and I now understand, because it is, okay, anyway, no, no, I'm being told. So show me, so what we want to know now is show me when the subconscious mind is running the show completely, at, like to a max. Show me that a person who's still, their body is alive. They're not, well, spirits, I'm getting cautioned here. <laughs> Um, show me when the subconscious, an overly, an overfocus on the sub. And now we see the coma. Look at the nine of swords. I knew it. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Look at all the cups. Nine of cups and the nine of swords. Wow. Wow. Isn't spirit cool? <laughs> um, wow. Okay. One more. I'm wondering now if Savannah is watching. So this would be when uh, I, I believe that what we're looking at here is a person who is alive, but there's an over emphasis on the subconscious. I would say this is a coma. This is what it's like being in a coma. It doesn't look good, does it? Because someone is trapped in the subconscious. Notice how that person, their hands are over their eyes. So it's, it's Savannah and I were zooming um, a couple of months ago about um, the the possibility that the situation that we're in right now is that the spiritual, there is an, a build-up, there is a, 
a, a, a hunger for us to uh, uh, to exist more in the in the quantum field and and there are beings in the quantum field who are thirsting for a little 3D. Why? Because in order to manifest anything, in order to function in this 3D world, you do need to have the field of attention. Remember how you get out of this trap? You have to take your hands off your face there and look at the red roses on the blanket. They bring you right to the magician card. That's how the magician manifests. That's how he gets into the material world. He puts his focus of attention. There is a specific reference point that brings him into the manifest. So what, this is a coma. This is a coma. I'm also um, getting a download here that it, when people are kept on life support, um, out of, it, it often is because people in the conscious realm are being very selfish. Um, anyway, there could be somebody who is on life support right now because someone else is being bloody selfish. But so this is an overbalanced, an over, this is an unhealthy situation where there is a, a desperate hunger for, for some conscious realm here. So it, I would imagine that when someone is a in, in a coma, it's not, it, they're, they're trapped. They're trapped. They cannot get into the, um, into the manifest because there's no, there's no field of vision. Okay, interesting. Now, uh, this one more thing. So to summarize this, because we're looking at the nines, if someone is alive, but the there is an overemphasis on the subconscious, so they're they're, they're shutting off or for some reason the conscious realm has been shut off because that's why we say sometimes that the nine of cups is is overdoing and embellishing because this person is totally focused on the cups. There's absolutely no focus on conscious realm. And this person is in agony when there is when there is total starvation of the, of the conscious realm, but they're alive. It, so it's it's just as unhealthy. So so being in a coma is is just as bad as someone who is totally run by ego. Isn't that interesting? Wow. And it's funny because the fours that we were looking at a moment ago is the middle pillar. So, you know, the idea is to balance spirituality and practicality, literally. All right. Now, Spirit is telling me that I can cheat now. So, so uh, what Spirit means by that is I'm going to now, we're going to have some fun. And we're going to ask what we would see if somebody, cards that we, all cards that we would also see when someone is in a coma. We, we had to go through that exercise but that was very interesting. I am going to tell you the funny story before I do this. So I had a client last year who, on a Zoom, she was really pressuring me. She wanted to know. Um, she had met up with a um, an ex that she hadn't seen in 10 years. They had gone on a date, and then he ghosted her. And she was so sweet, very, very beautiful woman, but I did notice that on her, the picture that she originally sent me when she got on the Zoom, it looked like a different person, still very beautiful, because she had, uh, she, you know, had a, an extra, I would say an extra, maybe 60, 70, 80 pounds on. Still very gorgeous. In fact, I remember after the Zoom trying to gain weight because I kind of, you know, wanted to look like her. It didn't actually work, but anyway. It didn't, the extra weight didn't look good on, on me, but, but here's what's really funny. So finally I agreed. I didn't want to look at it. What, what I needed to know was, um, the cards that I would see when a man got turned off because he thought that a woman was too fat. Cause that's what she asked me. She said, I want to know, did, did he get turned off because of my weight? And you know me, I'm into truth. And she, that's what she wanted to know. I, I, so I told her, I will do my best. And here's what happened. It's absolutely hilarious. So I turned on my little frequency. And I started with this deck. 
And I said, Spirit, show me the cards that I would see when a man gets turned off because he thinks that a woman is too fat. And this is how you can be sure that there is a very, when you hear card readers sometimes say that spirit is funny, this is, this is why, why readers say this. What came out over and over was the Empress and the Five of Swords. In other words, the cards that we would see to, that show us that a man thinks that a woman is too fat is an asshole <laughs> and a beautiful empress, you know. And, you know, the empress is very voluptuous. So that's how cool spirit is, you know. Anyway, um, so let's, we're allowed to cheat now because we've done our homework. So this is going to be interesting. So there's going to be a variety of things. So if we were truly just wanting to know if someone, for example, I was trying to figure out if Kate Middleton was in a coma, show me the cards that we would see. We're probably going to get something specific now to her. Oh, boy. Oh, gosh, guys. Guys. God almighty. Look. Do you remember the mudra? Do you remember that mudra? That mudra says, I am not dead yet. I will rise. So whoever this jerk is there, whoever that is, and I think I know who it is, she is, she will rise again. She will. I got to tell you here, this here is something that has, Ashwini, I don't know if you're watching, Ashwini did this beautiful reading the other day on, uh, it was just an explanation straight from her intuitive nature. She was describing the black, you know, that this is the only horse that is black and the dark nature of it. It's not moving, you know, anyway, she is not dead yet. Anyway, guys, um, so thanks for watching. So this was just uh, just a little, just, uh, and, and so for those of you who are reading cards, so what I recommend is that um, if you have a bunch of different decks, make sure you ask the question on each deck because you're going to get, you could be pleasantly surprised that there are different cards that you'll get, obviously, for the same question because the decks are different. That's the great thing about having different decks. Guys, I love you so much. Thanks for watching. Let me know, by the way, uh, please comment on any little tips that you have or anything else that you can add to it. Um, and I really, really love the way you guys add information in the comment section. Um, it's, it's really great to share information like that. Okay, love you so much, guys. Bye.